Welcome to a special edition of Physics 142 Online. What I'd like to do is work through in detail an example problem where we use both the lens maker's equation and the thin lens equation in order to solve a problem involving a lens. Then I will also use a ray diagram and it will be a special kind of ray diagram that you probably haven't seen, uh, at least not in class yet. So I hope this will be helpful as you approach the homework problems for this week. Here's the problem. It involves a double concave lens, and that's a lens with a particular kind of shape, a lens that looks like this. Whoops, gotta go back and get my pen. There we go. A lens that looks like this. It's concave doubly on both sides. And because it's going to be fatter at the edges than it is in the middle, we can tell that this should be a diverging lens. That gives us some idea of what to expect when we calculate its focal length using a lens maker's equation. And we'll get to that in just a minute because that is the first part of the problem. Find the focal length of the lens. Now what we're told is that there are radii of curvature 15 centimeters and 20 centimeters. So just the way I've drawn it, I can tell that the two sides of the lens have different radii of curvature. On the lens, on the left, it's much more curved, and that means a smaller radius of curvature. So if I had to draw in a center for the left-hand side, I would put it about there. On the right-hand side, it's less curved, which means that the sphere that that portion of the lens comes from would be bigger. And so what I'm going to do, whenever we use the lens maker's equation, which is what we have to do for part A, 1 over f equals n minus 1, index over fraction minus 1, times 1 over r1 minus 1 over r2, we have to first define what we mean by side 1 and side 2. And I'm just going to make a choice that the light is coming in from the left, which means the first side, the one that the light hits first, is on the left, and side 2 is on the right. That's all we have to do. So that means that the center, C1, is on the left, and the center, C2, is on the right. And we call the side where the light comes from the incident side, and the side where the light bends the refracted side. The light bends in the lens and emerges on the right. So that's the refracted side. And that helps us use the lens convention, the sign convention, to figure out what the signs of R1 and R2 are. And the simple rule is, if the center of curvature is on the incident side, then the radius of curvature is negative. And I should then be able to see, since the uh, side 1 is more curved, it's got the smaller radius of curvature. So I can tell R1 is going to be the one that's 15 centimeters, and because the center, C1, is on the incident side, it's negative. R2, by contrast, has the larger value because it's less curved, so it's 20 centimeters, and because the center is on the right-hand side, it has a positive sign. So R2 is plus 20 centimeters. The problem statement did not include a value for the index of refraction, but we're going to assume N is 1.50, which is typical for glass in most kinds of plastic. So we'll just use that value. And right away then, using the sign convention and having drawn the sketch, we have enough information to solve for the focal length. 1 over f then, if n is 1.5, 1.5 minus 1 gives us 0 0.5. And now here we have to be careful with signs. 1 over r1 is 1 over negative 15 centimeters minus 1 over 20 centimeters. Right away then I can see that my answer for f is going to be negative, which is what I expect for a diverging lens. That's good. So if we crunch those numbers here, for 1 over f, I get a value negative 0.0583, and of course that's reciprocal centimeters because of the way the equation is set up. And then if I just use that, take the reciprocal to solve for f, the focal length is minus 17.1 centimeters. So it's negative, which makes sense, 
because I expected it to be diverging. F less than zero means a diverging lens. The sign conventions are very important to follow if we want to get accurate results from using the lens maker's equation and the thin lens equation. All right, so if, if the signs on the radii of curvature don't make sense, go back to the rules, the way they were presented in class and in a previous video, and make sure that you understand them. So that's how to calculate the focal length. Now, let's find where the image is located. And that should be pretty easy because we go back to the thin lens equation. 1 over P plus 1 over Q equals 1 over F. And before I plug any numbers in, let me go ahead and solve for 1 over Q since that's what I'm trying to find. I'm trying to find Q. 1 over Q is 1 over F minus 1 over P. All right, so I have 1 over negative 17.1 centimeters minus 1 over, well, the problem says that the object is 10 centimeters away from the lens. So minus 1 over 10 centimeters. And uh, that value, when I evaluate that, is negative 0 0.158. Again, in reciprocal centimeters. So, whoops, I've already found F. But Q, then, when I take the reciprocal of that result, Q is negative 6.3 centimeters. And that will help me answer uh, the last part of the problem, which is to characterize the image, whether it's real or virtual, upright or inverted, and enlarged or reduced. But part C says find the magnification, because once we do that, that will also help us figure out what kind of image we have. So the magnification, the way it's defined, it's minus Q over P. And the minus sign again is very important. Since Q is negative 6.3, then this becomes positive 6.3 centimeters. P was positive too, 10 centimeters. And so we get 0 0.63 for the magnification. And right away, those values that are here give me a way to characterize the image. Right away, I can see that since Q is negative, that means that the image is virtual. And as we'll see when we do the ray diagram, that means we would expect it to be on the same side that the light came from, not on the refracted side. So the image will turn out to be on the incident side of the lens. Uh, the other thing we can do is, whether it's upright or inverted, if the magnification is positive, since M right, is greater than zero, that means the image is upright. Conversely, if it had been negative, that means the image would be flipped over. So we've got virtual, we've got upright, and the magnification, again, the absolute value is less than one, and so we have, I'll write, write that down, absolute value of M less than one means that it's reduced in size compared to the object. All right, so those are fairly straightforward answers to our questions just using the simple lens maker's equation and thin lens equation. And now what I'd like to do is to try to draw the sketch. And this is a little bit tricky, uh, but it'll give us practice for how to do these things with a diverging lens. And the first thing that you always need to do when you want to draw one of these sketches is draw the optical axis. I strongly recommend that you use a ruler to do this if you're checking your answer because it'll make drawing these horizontal lines and lines that go through special points much, much easier. And then since I don't know exactly what's going to happen, I'll just pick a spot on here where I'm going to draw the lens. And so how do I do that? Well, the lens, all of the lines are going to be drawn as if they're going through a single plane. And that plane will be the center of the lens. So I'm just going to draw a vertical dotted line. And then if I want to, I can draw the actual physical lens in here. Uh, and that probably makes the problem look a little bit nicer. So here is the lens itself, double concave. So we now need to rule off uh, with some sort of scale to show where the focal points are. That's the very next step draw in the focal points. So the focal length was 17.1 centimeters, 
And if I rule that off from here, uh, let's see. I can count off about uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Where will this be? About... Oh, that's kind of far away. That's that's far away on my scale, but that's okay. I'll I'll put it all the way out here because the ruler that I'm using indicates that that is about on the scale I'm using 17 centimeters. And so if I want to go the other side, then I go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, seventeen, right about over. Oh boy, it's almost off the the scale. So it's around it's around here on the other side. So those those are about equidistant. They may not be perfect, but they'll be pretty close for my purposes using the sketch. So those are then the two focal points. And usually we have to draw two, at least to do some of the principal rays for this particular problem. Now, what do I want to do for drawing in where the object is? Well, on the same kind of scale, then, the object, it says, was 10 centimeters. And so that would be, if I start at the center of the lens, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Around here, then, a little more than halfway out. That's good. And what we do for the object is we draw an upright arrow so that it has one end on the axis, the optical axis, and the other end... Uh, is the tip of the arrow. All right, so that's my object, and now I'm ready to draw the principal rays. The first one that you can draw that's really easy to do is what's called the central ray. Right, the central ray will take you from the center, or from the tip of the object, and go through the center of the lens. And that one, when it goes through the center of the lens, is not going to be. Uh, it's not going to be refracted at all. Actually, what happens is it bends a little bit near the set, near the first surface, and then it bends an equal amount on the back surface and emerges going through pretty much without any net deflection. And so here it is. I'll start at the center. And we'll see if we can do this without messing it up too bad. That's the center. Let me just go check and see on my ruler. Yeah, those two points are about right. So if I draw that through here, it goes through the center of the lens and keeps on going. Okay, so that is the central ray. Then the next ray is the parallel ray. And the parallel ray goes again from the tip of the arrow parallel to the optical axis. So from this point here, I want to go over to that point there at the midpoint of the lens. That's where the dotted line was, where I put the dotted line. And it's going to just go through the focal point like this. For a diverging lens, it goes now through the focal point, not on the opposite side of the lens, but on the same side of the lens. This is where a diverging lens is a little bit different from a converging lens. The light rays that come in parallel to it emerge going through the focal point on the same side, along a line that would go through that. So here, I'm going to go backwards over to here and see, sure enough, that is the trajectory that I want. So I'm going to put a dotted line in here. I know that I'm going to need this a little bit later on when I find my image. And so the trajectory that it takes is along that line right there. Perfect, OK? So let me put some arrows on this diagram just to remind us what it means. The light from the tip of the object comes in like that, parallel to the optical axis, and emerges along the path that would have taken it through the focal point on the same side. The central ray, of course, that's easy one, that just goes straight through without being deflected, with going through the center of the lens. Now, where do these guys cross? You can see they don't cross on the right-hand side, on the refracted side. So no image is formed on the right-hand side, and in this case, we take the two rays and we project them, if necessary, project them backwards and see where they cross on the incident side of the lens. And so you can see they cross right here, right where my cursor is. 
and that is going to be the tip of the image arrow. Now to check that out, I really should draw in the third principal ray. The third principal ray goes along a line that would take me through, it's, it's sort of the reverse of the parallel ray. Okay, It goes along a line that would take me through the focal point uh, on the opposite side of the lens. So it comes in from the tip of the arrow, going through the lens along a trajectory that would take me through here. And when it hits the lens, then it goes off parallel. So let's see if I can draw that one. So we start at the tip of the arrow. Make sure that your ruler is set up for that's one of the points. And then you make sure that the other end of the ruler is on the point over here, the focal point on the opposite side. So let's just check and make sure. Oops, that one has to come down a little bit on my ruler. So it's there, and then it goes through the focal point on the other side right about here. Good. All right, so I think I can draw that. Now, this might not turn out perfectly, but it should be pretty close. So the light comes in, starting from here, and it comes in as if it were going to go through that focal point on the opposite side. And I'm just going to draw a dotted line like that because the light really doesn't come through that direction. What happens to it is, like I said, when it gets to here on the central plane of the lens then it emerges going off parallel to the right. And so I can show that like this. If I get my ruler lined up properly. So from that point moving over to the right it goes off like that. And what I need to do then, since again I can see that that ray does not cross any of the other two rays on the right hand side of the lens, I need to project it backwards. So backwards from that trajectory goes just about perfectly through the point where the other two rays crossed. So once again, this ray from the tip of the arrow came into the lens like this, along this trajectory, and then when it hit the lens, it was refracted or bent so that it went off parallel to the optical axis. So all three of these, if the diagram is drawn carefully, cross at a single point, and then if I just drop a vertical line down and draw in the tip, this clearly becomes the image. And I can check real quick to see if it makes sense. Is it upright? Sure it is, right? Is it virtual? Yes, indeed, because it's formed on the same side of the lens that the light came from, not the side where the light actually goes through. And then is it enlarged or reduced? It's clearly reduced. So the, the thin lens equation gives us an answer that's consistent with the principal ray diagram, and we should be happy and ready to move on to the next problem. I hope this is helpful, and I hope, wish you well in getting started on the homework problems for this week. See you in class.